want to speak to you about the worst of all wages and then about the greatest of all gifts. Wages, a payment for what has been done. Wages, a payment that is deserved. I have a daughter. Today is actually her 20th birthday. And for the last two months, she's been getting up early, up at five to start work at six, picking strawberries in a local farm, long hours, arduous hours. Why has she done it? Why has she kept at it? Because every Wednesday she has received wages, a payment for what she has done, a payment that she certainly has deserved. In our country there's the national minimum wage but elsewhere in the world there are places with no such protection and some wages in some places may be very very low indeed something akin to slave labour and maybe some of those employees would say to us what I receive is the worst of wages but that wouldn't be true for there's a verse in the Bible and it says this, the words of Paul in Romans 6 and verse 23, the wages of sin is death. Wages, a payment for what has been done. Wages, a payment that is deserved. And the wages of sin is death. Over the years, medical science has prolonged life. In general, people live longer now than they did a hundred years ago. But while death can, in that sense, for a time be evaded, it cannot be forever avoided. We cannot escape death. We will not escape death. The ultimate statistic about death is this, one out of one dies. Why is that? Why do people die? Well, I want you to understand that death is an intruder into this world. When God made this world, he made a world without death. Adam and Eve were subject to just one prohibition, not to eat of one particular tree. And God's warning was very clear that disobedience would mean death. But the devil dismissed that warning, disputed it, denied it. Ye shall not surely die. Every gravestone, every cemetery stands as a, a silent but solemn testimony to who it was that was telling the truth that day. It says the Bible, by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. So death has passed upon all men for that all have sinned. As descendants of Adam we have inherited his sinful nature. We are sinners by nature. But more than that, just as Adam disobeyed God, we have disobeyed God. We've broken his commandments. And so we're also sinners by practice. And because we are sinners, we are subject to physical death. But more than that, you see, death is not the end. At death, the soul leaves the body and goes out into God's great eternity. And in our sins, we cannot possibly go to heaven. In our sins, rather, we must needs go to a, a place of darkness, a place of judgment, a place of banishment. Sin can have its pleasures. The Bible accepts that. But sin also has its wages. Let me quote that text again. The wages of sin is death. Physical death, spiritual death, eternal death. But that's only half the verse. For Christianity has more to say than that. The Bible has more to say than that. The Gospel has more to say than that. Here's the full text of Romans 6 and 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so we can turn from thinking about the worst of wages to now consider the greatest of all gifts. And what is it? It is eternal life. What is eternal life? Well, the Lord Jesus himself defined it in John chapter 17 and verse 3 in a prayer to his Father 
God. The Lord Jesus said this, This is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Eternal life includes the forgiveness of sins. Eternal life includes preservation from judgment. Eternal life includes the assurance of heaven. And we get all that conveyed in John 3 and 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But the ultimate aspect of eternal life is this, knowing God, our relationship with him, knowing the person who made us, and enjoying the purpose for which we have been made, knowing him, serving him, loving him in this life, and then when this life is over, the prospect of heaven, gates of peril, streets of gold, no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, and no more pain. This is eternal life. This is everlasting life. This is abundant life. This is life in all its fullness. Many strive to attain it. They hope that by their good deeds, by their religious observances, by their church attendance, by their praying, by their paying, that they will merit God's favour. But while their motives may be good, their methods, sadly, are all wrong. For, says our text, eternal life is the gift of God. The gift of God. Great contrasts in our verse. A contrast between sin and God. A contrast between death and eternal life. And a contrast between wages and a gift. Wages, something that you work for. Something that you earn. Something that you expend you expend time and effort for, but a gift is simply something offered to you and all you need to do is take it. As I've said, today is Catherine's birthday. Earlier in the week, her employer gave her her wages, but today we, her family, have given her a gift, her birthday present, and all she needed to do was to take it. A gift comes free, but that does not mean that it comes without a cost. Gifts are paid for by the giver. And can we begin to think, can we begin to calculate what it cost God to make this gift of eternal life available for us? It says our verse, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Eternal life cost God his son and eternal life cost the Lord Jesus his own life laid down at Calvary's cross. He experienced death that we might enjoy eternal life. And so today this eternal life is offered to you. No matter who you are, no matter what you have done, you can have this gift of eternal life by believing on the Lord Jesus, by taking him, by trusting him, by thanking him. In John chapter 4, the Lord Jesus entered into a conversation with a woman at a well, and on a number of levels, for a number of reasons, people would have been surprised by that conversation. A man speaking with a woman, a Jew speaking with a Samaritan, the sinless Christ speaking with a sinful woman. But during that conversation, the Lord Jesus offered that woman this gift of eternal life. Life that would satisfy her every longing. Satisfy her longing for forgiveness. Satisfy her longing for fulfilment. And that woman had a choice to make that day. To receive the gift. Or to refuse it. To begin an altogether new way of life. Or to continue along the same old way but by the end of that conversation, she had made her choice. She had recognised that Jesus was the Christ and she was now linked with him, associated with him. She was trusting him. She was now following him. And she had received from him that gift that he alone could give, that gift of eternal life. 
today you have the very same choice. And so I, I need to ask you, will you continue in your sins? If so, let me warn you that sin will take you further than you want to go. Slowly, but wholly taking control. Sin will leave you longer than you want to stay. And sin will cost you far more than you want to pay. Says the Bible, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Says our text, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The worst of wages and yet the greatest of gifts. And that gift is available to you. Eternal life offered to you by the God of heaven. Eternal life offered to you in the nail-pierced hand of the Lord Jesus. And so let me urge you to receive that gift gratefully and gladly and then enter into the blessings of salvation. This short video has come to you from the Arnott Gospel Hall in Kennaway, Fife. If you've got any questions about this little message, or any questions indeed about the, the Bible, please feel free to contact us through our Facebook page. And once these days of lockdown are over, we would be delighted to welcome you to our regular gospel service every Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock.